go with the start of the eighth grade game. We got a sweep around the right side for Harrison. Harrison's going down the right sideline. They get a huge gain on the first play of the game. Number 11 for Harrison, Chase Fett with that carry. As we see the replay here, it was a reverse around to the right side as Fett's B number 20 for Pleasant Run down the sideline, finally gets caught by number four who pushes him out. Very nicely done to start this game. And we're gonna get a run up the middle. Good amount of gain for about five yards. As you see the replay, that's number 34. Brandon Beavis with that carry. As we go on second down here, a nice sweep out to the left. Brandon Beavis with the carry, I believe, again. It's going to be close to the first down. Looks like number 33, Hunter Barge that time. Number 32, Marty Brewer, Brewster getting a good block near the line of scrimmage. We're going to get a third down and short here. The start of this eighth grade middle school game between Harrison and Pleasant Run. We're going to get an under center with the I formation. Going to give it to the back. And he's looks like he's going to be short. No, it's Brandon Beavis again. He's pumped. Number 54 is making this going to make this stop to make him short. Nice job shedding his blocker and getting off the ball and making a good good stop, pulling him back really, making sure they don't get that third down conversion. He's going to bring a fourth down and a couple yards. Let's see what we bring here with the I formation. Same set they did last time. They're going to give it to number 33. He's going to go around the right end. He's going to get the first down and more. Hunter Barge with a nice carry that time for Harrison getting the first down, the fourth down conversion. Good vision here following his blocker, number 32. Again, Marty Brewster making a nice block, springing Hunter around the right sideline. Looks like... Harrison's game is to run the ball today. Haven't seen him pass yet, and but if it's not broke, don't fix it. You see another eye formation here. They're going to fake it. Number nine's rolling out. He's going to get it, and it's going to be a touchdown. Number 80 caught that football. That's Simon Shirley making a nice grab, rolling out to the right. Give credit to the thrower, too. Jace Fett, I believe, that was number 11, making that throw. Very nicely done. Jace also pulling double duty tonight. It's looking like he's going to get the snap for this attempt. I say double duty because I thought he was going to get an extra point, but in eighth grade, we don't go for extra points. We just go for two. Well, look at that. They are going to go for <laughs> an extra point as they seem to correct me tonight. And the double duty is presented, but to no avail, unfortunately. The extra point is not successful. So that leaves us a score of Harrison, six. Pleasant run, nothing, as we start this game. Kind of looks like from the replay from our good camera crew here at Waycross that his foot hit the ground possibly altered his trajectory on that. Another good look here. It's hard to tell exactly. But a good attempt nonetheless. We don't see that too much in seventh and eighth grade going for an extra point. But nonetheless, they did. So Pleasant Run's going to get their turn here. They're going to get in the shotgun. It's a 4-3 defense. They hand it off to the right side. Good stop by Harrison, not getting them anything. Stay home, man. Stay home. 
It's Dantes Barnes on the carry. Just a simple handoff in motion from the quarterback. It's a team tackle, but Marty Brewster making some good blocks for Hunter on the previous series on offense is making a tackle now on defense. A lot of kids do double duty for 7th and 8th grade just because of the volume of the kids that aren't there, which is great for the kids to get experience to see what they like better from both sides of the ball. So again, the shotgun, which is, looks like it's going to be a pleasant run set the entire game here. They're going to get it. It's a quarterback draw. He's going to go around the right side. He fumbles it, but gets it back, it looks like. The referee hasn't made a call, but he now does, saying it. He, is, he did get the fumble recovery back to him. He juggled just a little bit, so it's not surprising that he didn't get it back. But very good gain. He's going to make a third down and manageable here. He's got a lot of room in front of him. He should just been a little bit more patient. If he was, he could have followed his blocker, and that way he wouldn't have juggled the ball getting hit that soon. But nonetheless, very nicely done. So setting up a third down at about three or four here with 4.20 left to go in the first quarter. Down by six points. Motion to the right. Looks like it'll be a quick screen, but he's going to take off instead. Number four, making things happen, spinning around, going reversing field, making another person miss. 11's going to have to track him down if he can, and he does. Jace Fett making a nice job on the defensive side of the ball for Harrison, tracking down number four. Nice job, as you see the replay here, doing a spin move, hitting the A button on the controller, and then doing his own due diligence of staying balanced, getting around tacklers. And then at that point, it was about speed and his counterpart, Jace Fett, bringing him down. He's got to be a little winded after that run. So we have first down for Pleasant Run, giving it to number three, I believe, on the left side, not getting much. Keyshawn Fry with that ball carry. Nice vision there to get inside of his blockers, but number 57, Barrett Halson, doing a nice job wrapping and tackling. Only a couple yards gain will bring up second down and long for Pleasant Run. Moving the ball, both teams are, to start this football game. Pleasant run now around the 25-yard line, threatening to get in the red zone here as we look for a pass. And he, oh, he gets away from a tackle from number 56, Max Gorman, and goes around the right end, not getting much. Eventually, number 80 bringing him down, Simon Shirley, with a nice tackle in the open field. Again, the replay with our awesome communications here at Waycross Community Media, showing us a nice effort by Max Gorman. But then, I believe, what's that? Brett, Rein Brett Reinsteidler on that nice hit for Harrison. And it was a really nice hit. On that replay, we saw the, the trembling Brett made. So now we have a third down and long. They actually lost yardage on that play. Motion to the left. It's going to be just a, a quick screen pass. It's not going to do a whole lot in the flat. They had a lot of room to run, but very nice pursuit by the Harrison defense to get off their blocks and make a play. Looks like number 80 was on that tackle. Simon Shirley again saying his name a bunch on this series. So you're going to go for it on fourth down, it looks like, possibly. And they are. It's going to be fourth down forever. It's going to be about fourth down and 17, it looks like. They get the ball. They fake the punt, but he's just going to run right around the right sideline. Number four doing good, but not good enough. Maybe a pass would have been warranted there. The fourth down and forever. He kind of fakes it. You'll see here, this is the flat pass on third down we're seeing. 
But he almost on that fourth down play, faked the punt and tried to run around the right sideline. No avail. Here it is again. Nice stop by the Harrison defense. Let's give number 44 some of that credit. Barry Rutherford. Nice job, son. And here we go with the first possession that they have, number 33 for Harrison. Hunter Barge with the carry this time around. Looks like Hunter and Brandon are going to be off and on this entire football game. Well, we see the sweep pass. Nice blocking by Harrison on the right sideline, eventually being brought down by number 25 for Pleasant Run. And I believe we're going to have a timeout on the field. Harrison with that timeout. With a minute 30 left to go in this first quarter, Pleasant Run up six to nothing. So I'm sorry, we got that score mixed up on our graphic. It should be Harrison six, Pleasant Run nothing. So coming out of the timeout, Harrison's got the ball. It'll be second down and short. Got a healthy dose of Hunter Barge and Brandon Beavis the last drive. We'll get a I formation again. Imagine we would see a handoff here. And we do, the exchange not happening. It looks like though Harrison jumped on the ball that time it was Brandon Beavis in the backfield. We get the replay here. Let's see if we can see what happened. And yes, it looks like Brandon never got the ball. Luckily, his teammate was right there, and they both corralled it before Pleasant Run could get a hand on it. So now with a minute left, Harrison coming up to the line of scrimmage. And their eye formation, Hunter Barge now in the eye. With the sun shining brightly down on this field. Hunter getting the handoff on the right side. Doing very well. Keeps churning. Going to be very close to that first down marker on third down. Not sure if he got it or not. It looks like one official is going to give it to him. And they do. They're going to move the chains on it. Well done blocking up front. And even better effort by Hunter Barge on that carry. So Pleasant Run defense now backed up again on a first down. They got to tighten up the helmets a little bit. Eye formation for Harrison. A pitch to Brandon Beavis and he's going around the left sideline, whoa! That looks like it's going to be a flag for horse collar tackle. And that was a violent act. He was forcefully brought down. Nice pitch here. 44 blocking ahead of him, Barry Rutherford. Nice job by Brandon Beavis here. Getting around everybody. But uh, that's for sure the true definition of a horse collar tackle. Number four, Chris Payne for Pleasant Run committing that foul. Will take him well past the 50-yard line into Pleasant Run territory. We'll be spotted near the 37 yard line. Again, we see the replay. A clear foul. And that brings us end to the first quarter. Here as the eighth grade football middle school, Harrison Wildcats are being the Pleasant Run Knights six to nothing. We like to remind everybody if they would love the opportunity to come to Waycross Community Media on the west side to volunteer for us in any capacity, we'd be more than welcome to have you. You can volunteer on a camera, you can help me do my job commentating on the game. We would love to see your talents. 
you can call 513-825-2429 or visit waycross.tv slash volunteer. We would love to have your talents, and the more people we can meet, the merrier. We love to see young people contributing to society. So, before we get started in the second quarter, I'd like to introduce my color partner over here, Jacob Williams, as he will be joining me for the remainder of this game. Jacob, did you get a chance to view anything what was going on in the first quarter? Oh, any, yeah. Any opinions? I, I just see where, you know, these uh, Wildcats, again, they come in here, take the long trip, and they're not about to just show up. They are definitely giving an account of themselves. I saw that touchdown pass when I was uh, walking up to the back up here to the press box. So looks like, uh, once again, uh, Pleasant Run Middle School is going to have their hands full to show a good account of themselves here in this bright sun. It looks like it. Well, they're backed up against in their own territory trying to prevent Harrison from scoring again with the I formation. We're going to go back to pass. Number nine is he's got somebody open. Oh, just Spencer Kennett. Storms. Yeah, Spencer Kennett leading them just too far. Pass intended for number 80, Simon Shirley, who did a due diligence on the defensive side of the ball. Made a great diving effort on that to possibly make a huge play for Harrison. Big arm on that throw that quarterback. Yeah, just need a little bit more air under it. So Spencer Kennett now under center once again. I formation. Gives it to Brandon Beavis, who's making people miss. And Brandon Beavis in there, number 34, once again, putting a hurt on these uh, Knights. Something about the number 34 in the Harrison uniform, huh? Yeah, without a doubt. And let's give number 44, Barry Rutherford, doing his job as a fullback, kicking out a blocker. He's going to spend this play on the sideline, and we're going to get... My guess is Hunter. Hunter Barge into the game, who is now in the single back. He's going to get that pitch off to the left side. Makes a person miss. The defensive end just whiffed, and he's going to get the first down. Chains are going to move once more here. Yeah, Dantes Barnes eventually on that tackle, but we'll see this replay. Number 10 had an opportunity to shed his block, but didn't get the opportunity to do that and make a play. Hunter takes advantage of it and goes upfield for the first down. Nice footwork to sidestep that tackle. So now with just about 6.50 left to go, just the start of this second quarter, if you're just joining us on Waycross Community Media Television. Got a motion from the right. He's going to hand it off. Number 85. Yeah, he's going to get stopped about five yards down. And a flag is down, most likely getting hit out of bounds. Luke Deers with that run. As we see the replay here. Yes, sir. That's Mr. Number 85. No relation to Mr. Number 85 and pinstraw stripes. Pinstripes? No. <laughs> what? You talking about a Yankee? <laughs> no. <laughs> As we see that is uh, possibly a future out of Hall of the Famer there. Future Hall of Famer, number 85. I'm not quite following. Well, he's Ocho Cinco? Yeah. <laughs> In the CFL, maybe. Uh, here we go. Start here with that penalty being assessed, the eye formation. They're going to fake it. Bootleg out to the right. He's looking for a pass. He's open. Number 32 is going to catch the ball, but he's not going to get in the end zone. Pass caught by Marty Brewster. Fullback doing a bunch of work and tackling is now getting his limelight. Out to the right. Nice throw and catch. If he stays on his feet, he scores, Jacob. Well, Spencer Kennett, he rolls out with that bootleg, that ball on his hip, and like he's been doing that all the time. And just as confident as you want there. Yeah. So now we got 44, Barry Rutherford, back in the game as fullback, and Brandon Beavis in the I formation. He, Brandon's going to get it, and the call is touchdown, Harrison. 
bring the score 12 to nothing now. Yeah, it looks like uh, the Knights are going to have to find a way to uh, get in the Harrison backfield and disrupt some of this. Yeah, the Wildcats are taking advantage of that defensive front, honestly, right now. If we can get some names on, on that offensive lineman here very soon, we'll do that because we obviously um, want to get the people, especially up front, the big, the big boys doing the the heavy lifting up there. So they went for an extra point last time, unsuccessful. This time they'll go for two. They got Hunter Barge back in the backfield, but they'll fake to him and then throw number 80, which his man. He's got some good hands, it looks like. Simon Shirley on the receiving end of that throw. He looks like a tight end in the making, doesn't he? It looks like these guys got plenty of weapons on offense. We're flag on, flag the, play. on the play, though. I'm impressed. That was a good play call, good pass, good catch. Looked like varsity. Yeah, they're just letting this guy, mm. uh, what's his name, the quarterback here, Max uh, Spencer Kennett. He's, they're letting him have too much comfort. He's just back there like he knows he's been doing this. Well, it's going to be a holding call on Harrison. It's going to back him up for this two-point conversion attempt. They're going to have to redo now. And that's going to bring him outside the 10-yard line. Going to be spotted around the 12. So, I'm not sure what kind of play they got here for a two-point conversion from the 12-yard line, but they're going to have a two-on-two -two set with motion by 85. 85 is going to set the block, and they're going to throw to number 11 Overshoot. a little too far. You know, number 11, Jace Fett, was the intended receiver, and Spencer led him a little too far. He was open. He was open, and he had time. He could have took another couple more beats and threw that ball. He had enough protection, but in the end, we find that the... Uh, Harrison Wildcats are leading uh, middle school Knights 12 to nothing. Daquan Price on the defense for that. And as we see, the holding call was right next to the quarterback was the foul that was made by the officials tonight. So the two-point conversion fails for the Wildcats, leaving us now at a score of 12 to nothing with a mixed extra point and a missed two point conversion. That gives Pleasant Run an opportunity now, an easier opportunity I should say, if they come back to this game to possibly win it. So, well, here we go, Pleasant Run. As they start their gift. possession. Sweeps right. Sweeps right, here's your right, but they're not gonna get anywhere. Brought down by number 39. 38 possibly can't really see that number unfortunately unfortunately uh, mother nature is giving us a lot of competition <laughs> with this beautiful sunset we're having in places I'm sure yeah. but yeah we're not looking for scenery right now it looks like Dantes Barnes was the carry on that play for pleasant run getting nowhere unfortunately for him and ba back to the line of scrimmage which will bring up second down and ten Five oh six left see to that go sun. And a half. Woo. It's beaming. Yep. Here we go. Motion to the right. He's gonna fake it. Give it now to oh. the person. I believe that was Dantez again. They faked it to Keyshawn Fry and gave it to Dantez and the Nothing Harrison happened. Wildcats were ready. Harrison Wildcats were waiting on that one. Well, I'm sure this is a pina colada sunset somewhere, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes, give me a martini, give me a pina colada, give me a Mai Tai. <laughs> I'll take all of them. Uh, it's wonderful, though. Mother Nature is giving us a show tonight. Of course, so is Harrison, and Pleasant Run needs to respond right now with trips to the left. They look like they're in a passing formation. The third down and long. He's looking to pass to his left. Out, someone's in the flat is open, but... He finally passes it to Dantez. Dantez was open, but a poorly thrown ball by Chris Payne That's is going to be unsuccessful. They needed to complete that ball, Patrick. You're right, and we're going to get the replay shown here. A nice scramble drill. Dantez is looking to go right. He stops, puts his foot in the floor, and then goes back. But if he completes that, he's off to the races. Yep. It's so, nonetheless, it will bring up fourth down. And I'm going to guess that's 15. 
somewhere around that range. But high snap. He's going to punt it. A decent punt. High in the sky. Over. And it's going to be down on the uh, night 47-yard line. Around about that's by Dantes Barnes. So Harrison will take over at, I believe they're going to spot it at the 46-yard line where Harrison will take over the ball, first and 10, to just add to their lead, Jacob. Well, I don't think uh, that's the plan. The Knights are going to have to stiffen up on defense somewhere. Uh, Get themselves a chance to dent this scoreboard. They only down by two scores if they could get a turnover here of some sort. Yeah, the way the Harrison offense has been running, though, it's going to be hard unless they do get a turnover. They they bubbled the ball one time. Let's see what happens again. They're going to get a sweep left there to Brandon Beavis, and he's going to get about six yards on the play before he gets brought down by it looks like number 39. But I don't have – yes, I do. I have Zari Franklin – was one of those individuals to make the stop. So we have 3.40 left to go in the half. I Second feel like down five on the play here. I feel like we're going to get a healthy dose of running to get that clock, keep that clock moving, especially when you're on the night side of the field here. They rush to the line of scrimmage, pitch it now to the right. That's Hunter. Oh, nice hit. That's completely legal. He was not down. That's number four for the uh, Knights on that hit. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to get you that name. That is Chris Payne. As Payne. he goes to the right there, he's got a team tackle, but he's coming in and cleaning it up. Chris Payne dealing in some pain right there. Yeah. Lowering the boom. It'll be third and three for the Wildcats. So now we have a third and three set up with 2.50 left to go in this half. This is where the night defense needs to stop. It'd be nice. Of course, they got the I formation with Barry Rutherford in there as a fullback. There's and Brandon Beavis is going to get it. And he's going to be super, super close to that first down. He looks a little short. short. Yeah, from where they're spotting, he looks a little short. But I'm sure they'll go for it on fourth with that distance. Yeah, Rutherford honestly making some good plays this entire game. Whiffs on a block would have been a good kick out because his defender ended up getting the first contact and they're going to call it fourth down. They spot it well before that first down marker. I thought he was closer than that, Jacob. Well, this is where they're going to have to just sneak this ball. Under they center, don't. they're going to give it to Hunter on the left side sweep and he's going to cut back up field. He's got the first down and more. He's breaking Throwing tackles back up to the right sideline. He could score if he beats this man. Number three. Bringing him down for the pleasant run. That's Keyshawn Fry with a touchdown saving tackle. We see here on the replay, he's able to run out of arm tackles, keep his balance. This guy's here trying to make one of those curtain tackles and nobody's gonna get him down where eventually you get number three in here, holding on for dear life until his buddy number 20 can help him out on that assist. Yeah, that's Keyshawn Fry, number three, and Dantes Barnes, number 20. Well, it looks like we have a penalty. I didn't see a flag fly, but oh, that's the call. The Holy hold is call. now a hold on Harrison. Get the replay, possibly seeing it here. As a reverse field, that's hard for an offensive lineman to not hold because he's, he's twisting, and you I mean, it's just natural instincts. You don't want to get them to your guy that you're trying to protect. And, and you see it at the right side of your screen here is that little inside hold. So that'll bring up fourth down and short again, but they give it to Brandon Beavis, who will get the first down. So two four down conversions here, and Brandon Beavis is gonna be stopped by number, I believe 71. that was 20, 71, Cesar Neary. Nice job kicking out on this again by Rutherford. Just. Make it a hole. It doesn't even have to do much, but Brandon does the rest. Gain the first down. Doesn't matter for the Wildcats to down or the distance because up front these guys are clearing out lanes. Yeah, the problem now is the clock. You've got a minute 10 left to go. You're not in the red zone yet. You're just past the 30 yard line. They got I formation again. Hunter's in the backfield. They're going to fake to him, roll out to the right. 
and he's just going to throw that away, which is probably a good decision by Spencer Kennett. Spencer you know, Knights, Pleasant Run Middle School Knights able to put some pressure on this guy that time. So it's going to be, what, 56 seconds left to go in the half. Yeah, you're going to be second down and 10. You anticipating all passes from here on out, you think? Mm, I don't think so. I mean, yeah. okay. they got two timeouts, so they don't have right. to. And the way they've been running the ball. And they don't have to because of that either. <laughs> Brand Beavis is going to be the single back here. They're going to. Oh, in the nice. backfield, it's he's all fumbled, loose. But he catch number 11 is going to pick it up, Jace Fett. And he's going to try to make something out of nothing here and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Number four, Chris Payne, just took his helmet off on the sideline. Looks to be in some pain, but that reverse exchange never happened. But luckily, it ends up in, his, in Jace's hands at some point, and good pursuit by the Pleasant Run Chris defense. Payne. I believe that's number 12, Isaiah Loveless, on the stop. We got another person down as well for Pleasant Run, which is not something you'd like to see. And we see Chris Payne, who was in on that uh in some difficulty That's here on the bench. I'm sorry, Jacob. Number 12, Isaiah Loveless, who made that tackle. Hard time getting up, as we can see. So, unfortunately, and there's number four, like I said, Chris Payne on the sideline. Which he immediately went ran to the sideline yeah. and took off his helmet. Which was uh, scary for us because yeah. we, we heard it up here. He, he literally slammed his helmet on the ground and, and grabbed our attention with that noise. We, we looked up, and we saw him in pain, bent over at his hips, not knowing what was going on with him, but it looks he's like he's going to be okay. Field, yeah, I, he didn't look like to be in that much, that much pain, or, or else he's just a tough guy, which I would love to give him credit for, for sure. You always want that. But 12 looks like he's going to keep his helmet off, and hopefully Isaiah's okay. You know, the Knights, if they could have... Had a few more hats around when that ball fell out on the floor. They might have possession right now, but unfortunately or fortunately, however you look at it, uh, the Wildcats were able to come up with it and turn a major loss into not so much. Yeah, well, with 41 seconds here, they're going to be looking at a third down and 13 or 14 just inside the 35-yard line, and there's going to be a false start on Harrison. Harrison. Move it back yeah, five yards. Back again. And they're just shooting themselves in the foot here with 40 seconds left. Well, we'll see what they come up with now because at this point, you might as well go into halftime with the lead. But he may want to throw that ball. What do you think, Patrick? You know, just... Being third down, they, uh, I think they go for it on two downs here just because it's, it's 40 seconds left. I think you run the ball here because you're successful at doing that. You run the ball here, see what you get, call timeout, and then set up a pass play, depending on what you do as a result of this play. On this run, okay. Yeah, so we got a two-on-two -two set here in the shotgun. Spencer's going to be rolling out There's to his left. Hold. Another hold, but he's going to be sacked, though. This by a team tech. Well, there's going to be, I believe, number 28 is going to be in the backfield. Dion Campbell the first time. We're going to give him the credit for the sack as well as some other people here. Yeah, it's going to be a hold, I'm guessing, which it is. That yeah, penalty should be declined. Yeah, you would think they would decline it for sure. So here's the replay on it. You have 22 as well in there, if I believe I see that number correctly, which is Elijah Housley doing a nice job getting upfield, getting off their blocks, and it's going to be fourth down and forever. They Clark. are back near the 49-yard line. They got to get up towards just inside the 20. I want to say the 19, so. Clock still running, 18 seconds left to go in the half. Yeah, they're just going to punt it here is the formation they're in. Low, low kick, kick end over end but it'll take a Harrison bounce which if he's smart just let it go but 4.4 seconds left to go in the half yeah if he just let that die the half would have been over and I'm 
that would have been it. But we're going to get one play here for Pleasant Run, and all it takes is one play, as we saw with the seventh graders. We're going to see them get one play and possibly a touchdown to half the score before halftime. It's possible, Jacob. We have saw it. Like I said, it doesn't take much. doesn't take much with these grade schoolers. Grade schoolers? These are junior high talent. Oh, well, when I was... <laughs> <laughs> junior high, grade school, middle school. Oh, I don't know anymore. When I was when I was in grade school, we did it. F it was uh, one through eight. So that's what I grew up as. And now they're calling it middle school. They're calling it junior high. They're calling it anything. Heck, they're even going to some of the high schools now for their education. Seventh and eighth graders are, which is uh, an interesting immersion. Yep. Seemed like all bets were off once you graduated up, Pat. <laughs> well, I guess that was the year. They said, well, I guess we got to get these guys more mature. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> comes more exposure to some people that are half their age. Oh, man. But anyway, as we said, 4.4 left to go. He's going to be in the shotgun. I cannot read his number who, who is in there. Looks like number Yeah, four it's going to be Chris Payne. Yeah, I didn't we'll know if he was going to come back in or not. Looks like Dantes Barnes is going to be to his left. And they're going to pass it. Looks like it's an all-go. And they're going deep. The Hail Mary's wide open if he catches it and runs with it. But he can't. Dantes Barnes, number 20, that on the all-go Hail Mary. Wide open. You're not going to get more of a gift than that. Nice throw by Chris Payne. Juggled it out of his hands. What did we say about the one play? It was there. It was there, so at the end of the first half of this ball game, we have the Harrison visiting Wildcats leading Northwest, excuse me, Pleasant Run Middle School 12 to nothing. So we'll be back with more in the second half. Hey, son. So you're turning 13, becoming a man. Your hormones are surging. Starting to notice the girls. You know, maybe your body's doing some funny things. So, you want to talk? Or we could talk about drugs. Yeah, let's talk about drugs. There's no wrong way to talk to your kids about drugs, but you'll need to be ready. We can help. Visit our website at drugfree.org. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this broadcast this evening at Northwest High School where we have the Harrison Wildcats and Pleasant Run Knights facing off against each other. At halftime, we had the score 12 for Harrison Wildcats, nothing Pleasant Run Knights. I'm Patrick Lewis alongside Jacob Williams. We are bringing to you tonight the second half of a well-played game so far on both sides of the ball. I would say no turnovers, no crazy penalties, Nothing too out of the ordinary. Very well played. He has some skill players on both sides of the ball. Anything is possible. If we had, right before half, a Hail Mary that was successful, this would have been a completely different game, Jacob. That's right. Uh, the, the Northwest Knights, or excuse me, the Pleasant Run Middle School Knights make a long pass from Chris Payne, number four. And uh, unfortunately, Dantes Barnes couldn't corral it in. But it looks like the Knights are going to be starting on offense here at the beginning of this third quarter. Yeah, let's see what Pleasant Run could do with the ball. They got to do something to get back in this game here. They got a two and two set in the shotgun. They're going to do a quick out to the Dantes Barnes, who tries to make something happen. Number 44, Barry Rutherford, the fullback on the offensive side of the ball, brings him down. As we see a replay from Waycross Community Media. Looks like right Chris there. Payne will be the quarterback here in the second half, Patrick. Yeah, he what you're referring to is an injury that he possibly had right before halftime. But he came back right back in from that play, so it's not necessarily surprising that we see him start the second half. They might be doing a little bit more passing here. They weren't very successful in the first half running the ball, as they do, again, a two-and-two two set in the shotgun. Running the quarterback keeper around the right side nice pursuit making great hits no for Harrison room. yeah let's uh, nice job pursuit for the Harrison defense Harrison fans are thrilled with that pursuit giving their team big props 
be able to take Mr. Payne down. Yeah, and I believe that was number 27, Andrew Helton, making that stop for Harrison, who size-wise took on a bigger Chris Payne on that play and held up well. So congrats, Andrew. So we're going to have a low snap. He's going to pick it up. He's looking downfield. There's people open, but he's going to take off running. Past the 40, he's got the first down. Past the 45, he's going to be marked down around the 50-yard line. First down, pleasant run. Payne able to turn that corner. A couple of those three different uh, Wildcats thought they had an angle on him, beat him to the spot, but he's able to turn that corner for a big play. Yeah, Simon Shirley, the big, we're going to call him tight end looking. Harrison defender bringing him down on that play, saving a would-be touchdown. I say tight end just because he's got the stature of it. He just looks like the stereotypical tight end. So, a good start for Pleasant Run here, starting at midfield here with just not even a minute left to go. We got motion. He's going to pitch it quickly. So I believe that's number 22, which is Elijah Housley. Not going anywhere. A loss of about six on the play. Wildcat defenders all over that. Uh, Pleasant Run Middle School Knights lucky that that ball was held on to because those well-tat defenders almost beat the night to the ball right. on the pitch. Yeah. They almost knew what play was going to happen here. Looks like number seven, Daquan Price, is going to be entering the huddle for Pleasant Run. And for a second down and long, we're going to see what the Knights come up with. And that's going to be about second down and 17. There's ping back there. Motion by Dantes Barnes. He's going to keep it. Fake to Dantes. Go around the left side. That's 27. Chasing him again. Breaks the tackle, Chris Payne does. Number 11, Jace Fett. Finally brings him down inside the 30-yard line. But it looks like they're going to say he stepped out before he got to that mark. So he's going to be marked at the 32-yard line. Hey, if Payne has to be a one-man offense, and so be it. Runs right out of that tackle. And... Uh, you could just get a couple yeah, right of guys. There you see him on the 33-yard line. He stepped out. They're going to mark him at the 32. The 33 is where he stepped out. Well, they're going to have to be careful because the Wildcats will eventually catch on to that play if they haven't already. Whoops. Offside. Yep. It's going to go against Harrison. Give him another five yards. So that'll be first down and five now for Pleasant Run Knights. I don't necessarily like to see a quarterback that's the show. It never bodes well. It's always you're going to get an average team. You look, at, you look at the teams that had, you could possibly get one year out of a good team that does that. Like, look at Michael Vick. He was the show in Atlanta, and he did well for a couple years. But after that, you know, you need playmakers around because you're going to get used to that. So we're going to have Dantes Barnes in motion. They're going to give it to him on the T formation coming around the right side. And nice tackle. Yep. Number 22, Max Shercliffe. Four, the Wildcats make it a play. So it's going to be second down, and there's just no way that the Knights can get around that in. Yeah, Good nice pursuit. wrap. Very nicely wrapped and done by Max Shercliffe. That's what you taught as, as a defender. You want to you know, spread your arms and wrap, you know, almost kind of like you're getting a big bear hug and just wrap up. And he, he went low, got the tackle. Very nicely done. It'll set up a, a second and five. Pleasant run. Looking for the quarterback keeper around the left side. Dantes making a block. He's going to spring him. He's going down the left sideline. Finally brought down by Brett Reinstatler of Harrison. Not until he makes the first down, though, Jacob. Well, he's able to turn and muscle his way in there. And like you said, he got a block. Nice back block. Wow. I want to know who that number was. It kind of looked like Elijah Housley making that block. This guy, number two for the Wildcats, uh, Brett Reinstadler, he just hung on for dear life. And, you know, one of these times he does that, he's just going to get dragged down the field like that. <laughs> well, Chris is a, a big guy to bring down as a quarterback. Ben Roethlisberger type at his grade level at eighth grade. So we have motion. Dantes is going to get around the right side. Harrison has it sniffed out, though. Well, Harrison has that play worked on because 
they never even get like they're going to get an inch off that play. Yeah, this is not the first time they've ran that play. You know, guys standing in the backfield waiting for him to try to make the turn. Yeah, it looks like our big tight end, we're going to call him Simon Shirley, making first contact on that play. Andrew Helton, again, making a good stop on some of those. Kyle Hoskins, number 54, was also in on that tackle as well in pursuit. So that will bring us second down and 10. On about, we'll say, the inside the 15-yard line, the 13-yard line, he's going to hand it off on the left side and again sniffed out by the Harrison defense. And number 56 again, Max Gorman on the stop. Max Gorman on the stop with the Harrison defense along with number 63, Max Boyle. So we'll bring up third down and very long, more than 10 yards. We'll call it 13 or so with 3.23 left here to go in this third quarter. Again, motion by Dantes Bernard Barnes. He's looking to throw this one. And he's looking for Dantes too, or another antenna receiver, which would be number three, Keyshawn Fry, possibly the also intended recipient of that play. Rolling you know, out right. He just gently lost that ball. He needs to put some mustard on that to get it there. Yeah. As you know, it's a, it's almost the perfect pass for nobody because he had two he had two recipients that could have caught the ball. And you had um, I'm sorry, Keyshawn Fry at going to the out route and the coming back. And he if you got more more effort on the ball, he could have caught it easily. But then if you got less on the ball, Dantes Barnes would have caught the ball. So he just got enough effort on the ball where neither of them would have got it. Indecision. Yeah, so we're going to have a fourth down and long here, and we're going to go for it. Chris Payne looking for the, again, immediate pressure by number 56 and eventually being brought down by Max Gorman, which has got to excite that defense. And there's going to be a flag, which is probably going to be of the 15-yard variety against the quarterback. Looks like they're going to call this against the Wildcats, possibly. Personal foul against the Wildcats. Yeah, that's going to give them an automatic first down. Or that's just going to be called after the after play. The play, okay. So they're going to retain possession, Harrison will, after the sack by Max Gorman. So the wit. At about the 20-yard line, 25-yard line, it looks like. Maybe that's a 30-yard line from the screen here. It looks like the whistle was blown, and the Harrison defense just kept pursuing and tackling them, and that's why the flag was thrown. After the penalty, Which is illegal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't. you got to stop when that whistle hits. And, you know, you got to have a play on fourth down like that. You know, you're not going to make that with that guy. Yeah, it's a, that's a tough call. So, nonetheless, Harrison gets it, and that's going to be Brandon Beavis on the left side off tackle. Going to gain about uh, four yards, five yards, second down and manageable coming up. 20 on the stop for the uh, Dantes Barnes Dantes playing Barnes. both ways. He's second. Oh, we see where the lights are on now. They warmed up pretty fast, Patrick. Yeah, I told you they would, Jacob. We were curious or not if the stadium was going to turn the lights on for us after that bright sunset, and they do. <laughs> so we're going to have, it looks like, Hunter around the left side this time, and wow, looks like Dantes lowered the boom on that. Yep, it's going to be third down. It looks like about a yard and a half, though. Where uh, Northwest, oh, excuse me, Pleasant Run Middle School Knights need to find their way off the field here. Mm. Nice tackle. Getting leverage. I like it. Timeout called by the Harrison. Wildcats. So, with 2.01 to play, we have a timeout by Harrison. They're first of the second half, and they're leading 12 to nothing. No score here yet in the second half with two minutes left. Of course, we know later on this week on Friday, we'll be at uh, Wynn Woods High School 
Uh, their homecoming, I believe, as they'll face uh, the LaSalle Lancers over there. It's a big game for Winton Woods because LaSalle is number one in Division Two. Their first year in Division Two, I believe. And they are racking up the points. LaSalle's got a good offense. Heck, they got a good defense. They are good. They're young. Young. Very young. Sophomores and juniors. They well, got one defensive lineman that's going to Northwestern. You know, I've been hearing good things. Honestly, the only thing I know about LaSalle is what I've read in the newspaper, but been hearing positive things about their second year head coach, the way he trains these guys were you know, gives them the big military type of SEAL Team 6 strategy to work on for their training process, so. Well, that's varsity, but now we got the eighth grade football, Harrison Wildcats now under center, giving the ball off the left side to look Brandon Beavis, and he's gonna get the first down on and that third down play. Very nicely done by Brandon. The way it looks is the Wildcats can pick up whatever yards they need as long as they don't shoot themselves in the foot with a penalty. Yeah, Brandon Pruitt, number 99, big number 99 is gonna was on the left side of that offensive line making things happen. Looks like we got another timeout on the field. Pleasant Run taking their first timeout. 156 left to go in the third quarter. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why you're taking the time out here. I, I knew Harrison took theirs because they probably wanted a good third down play. But unless Pleasant Run wasn't lined up correctly, I'm not sure why you take one with two minutes left to go in the third. You're, we're going to need those down by 12. If Harrison comes down and scores here, you're going to be down by three scores. You're going to want those timeouts later in the game. Well, they got a, the, you know, the Knights, middle school Knights, they got to find someone who knows what to do with the ball. You know, it's like best chance they had to score was at the end of the first half, but I don't want to be the dead horse. <laughs> well, here we go. Hunter Barge is going to be in the backfield this time. It looks like every other play they switch between Brandon and Hunter. Hunter's going to get the right sweep here. He's going to be in pursuit. He's going to run around the pursuit. And he's going to get to the right side. The flag is thrown. He's going to be out of bounds around the 40-yard line for a first down. We're going to have to see what this penalty's for. That should be a holding call on one of his perimeter blockers. Looks like uh, young Mr. Number 3 in there for the Wildcats was definitely holding, but we'll see what they come up with. Yeah, they're marching it back. Yep, that's what it's going to be, too, holding. Of course, uh, see if we can see it on this replay by Way Across Community Media. It should be on the bottom of the screen. Right there. At the, it looked like at the top, number 72, I believe that was. We don't have a 72, so it can't be a his number. <laughs> it's right there with number three, just let number seven loose. Okay, well, we're going to have first down and long now. They're going to give it to Brandon off the left side tackle. He's going to gain half of that yardage back. Yeah. I should say the whole yardage back. But oh, man, here we go. People are getting in a scuffle now. It's going to be getting ugly here. People are throwing fists around. It's not good for eighth graders to be doing something like this. This is where, you know, coaches to get out there. And Dantes, Bonar, or Dantes Barnes, I believe, took his helmet off, which is an ejection. If, yeah, that's... I'm not sure if the eighth grade rule on that. I haven't seen it yet, but if they call it, which I want to say, referees do miss people taking the helmet off, like in the FSU Notre Dame game. I'm just going to say, referees have missed this call before. I should have <laughs> known you were going to find a way to figure out a way to get Notre Dame in this nah, discussion. You know me too well. And we got the replay here. So, nice job with the run. I mean, up until that point, it was clean football. Didn't get the fight on replay, but it's probably not something we want to see anyway again. At, at the eighth grade level, Jacob, you, you never want to see these kids getting in a scuffle like that. I mean, this is uh, an organized sport where you can let out your frustrations and become an athlete, building discipline. And that's not part of the philosophy in football and not just in middle school, but all levels of activities. You don't, you don't want that to happen. 
And a guy like uh, Mr. Franklin, number 39, where he's put together, all he needs to do is go out for the wrestling team here next month. And, and here's, here's the call. So it's going to be a dead ball personal foul on Pleasant. I'm sorry, on Harrison. But we're going to probably get one, yes, on Pleasant Run as well, and which are going to be offsetting. And, and the result is basically going to replay the down. So all the commotion... Offsetting penalties will give us a redo of the down, which was second. And it seems like this last 30 seconds when we had 2.01 left on the clock, we had two timeouts and a whole lot of commotion. It's taken a while to get to this 127 mark here in the third quarter. Well, they got him calmed down some now, and that's good. You know, we don't want him to uh, hold on to that grind, that venom. Oh, this is where, like you said, respect the game. This is the OHSAA you're playing. And as long as you're patient, you're going to get a chance on the next play or some play later on to get your point across with these guys. Mm -hmm. But when you're down on a scoreboard like this, you, know, you can't let that frustration uh, ooze yeah. into the equation. Well, the Harrison players are in the end zone, huddled up. I guess they didn't know how far back they were going to go, so they just decided to go as far back as, far back as they, they could. Well, the chain gang is showing, what, second and 10 or 11 there? Yeah, about second and 10 here. It's just a redo of the play. They're going to be spotted on around the 26, 27 yard line. And here we go. You're going to look back to throw. pass. Spencer's looking back to pass. Rolling right. He's going to be chased. Sack. Wow. It looked like, what was that, 28? Deion Campbell, I believe. And here we have the replay. Nice pursuit. Yes, I, I think that is. He ran right around yep. that block. So they finally get some rush there out of the front four and get a sack. So Cesar Neri was also part of that rush. Third down, about 14 here. They're going to let the clock run out, I believe. If they decide to, they could. They got 10 seconds now left to go. The coaches from the sideline not saying anything, so they're going to run a play right before the end of this third. They're going to get it off tackle to Brandon Beavis, and like a lot of he's been doing this entire game, gaining a good steady five to seven yards, and that will bring us to the end of the third quarter here at Northwest Stadium, where we still have the score of 12 to nothing in favor of Harrison Wildcats. We have Harrison driving, Jacob. We got a third down coming up at the other half of this quarter. But we'd just like to remind everybody, if you guys want to come and volunteer for a great organization as Way Across Community Media is, you can. We excite people. We, we bring people together. We have a positive attitude, and we instill that in the volunteers that we have. And we just care about the high schools and organizations that we produce for. You can get involved by calling 513-825-2429, which is on your screen at the moment. Or you can go to waycross.tv slash volunteer, and you can sign up. There's a schedule on there. You can see what's going on see what kind of things you want to get involved with. You could do camera for a government meeting. You can do commentary for a football game like this. You could do something for Wynton Woods like you will be doing next Friday. This Friday, I should be saying, Jacob. And there's a ton of things you could be doing. So we invite you to come onto our website, see what interests you. If you want to get involved, it's a great way to give back to your community, especially on the west side where everybody's going to see your work and you can call your parents and your co-workers and say, hey, this is what I did this weekend. And, you know, there's tangible evidence that you actually do good. <laughs> That's right, though, Patrick. There's a lot of good that can be done. Uh, I just look at it. Instead of a bowling league, I'm volunteering. A lot of you people bowl, not to swear at the idea of a bowling league. Uh, 
I was basically raised around a bowling alley, but there's a people out here that you may not have money, but you got time, and you should give. Yeah, and that's the best thing. I, I'm telling you, as somebody that values my time, coming out and, and doing something like this, and it's just not, I mean, I, I'm in the broadcasting business. I, I, I like to... Uh, do this for a living but and people like when I got started I wasn't doing this uh, three years or four years ago when I came to Waycross I wasn't doing I had no idea I could be doing this in my life and you know I still love to come back and, and get the opportunities to work with you guys and you know get connections and understand that this is something right, I, I enjoy doing so we're going to have fourth down right and now. about I want to say seven and we're going to have a punt here by Harrison and that's Jace Fett with the punt, end over end kick. Going to take a Harrison bounce towards the 30 yard line. Won't quite get there. It will be stopped around the 34 yard line where the Pleasant Run Knights will take over in hopes of getting something completed here at the start of the fourth quarter. Yeah, they need to find a way to dent that scoreboard, sustain the offensive drive down the field. But we have to find out if there's any venom left over in the hearts of some of these young players that will find yellow flags hitting the floor. Yeah, up until that point, there wasn't a whole lot of penalties. I mean, there were a few, but nothing too detrimental to either team for the most part. But then flags just started flying. So we see Mr. Number 39 back into the game, Zari Franklin for the Knights. Chris Payne as he has been all game, will be in the shotgun to be taking a snap. They got a tight formation. Actually, there'll be somebody under center. That is not Chris Payne under center. That's number 12. And he's going to be pitching it to Chris Payne, who is going to be getting enough yards for a first down. That's Isaiah Loveless, number 12, in there under center for the uh, Knights. Yeah, and we see on this replay, he's got a, a slew of blockers in front of him getting upfield. You don't want to get in front of him too much. Well, he almost fumbled it there. He got a hand on it, finally getting rolled out of bounds. And that was a good start to the fourth quarter. It was. And a good start to their drive to get some momentum to get back in this game. Now the Knights are going to have to kind of move with a little bit of a hurry. The clock is running here, and they got to come up with two scores. As they again understand the wishbone, they're going to pitch it to Dantez Barnes this time. And Dantez, whoa, getting upended near midfield. Looks like it's number 27, down. Andrew Helton on the stop. Takes that leap of faith. Unfortunately, didn't work out for him. There was hats waiting when he left the ground, and so... Yeah. He's lucky he didn't get hurt on that. Nice job by Andrew Helton on that. He was on the ground and saw him he was coming and basically just stood up and he got the tackle. Good awareness. So second down and seven here. Isaiah under center again, giving to his fullback. He's got places to go. He's going to get the first down. A nice different style formation we got here for Number the Knights. 28 on, on that carry for the Knights. Is uh Dion Campbell? Dion Campbell. Yep. yep. Dion Campbell was the rusher on that play. Well, that was a good carry by him. Uh, yeah. yeah. So they're going to stick to this formation. Loveless is going to be under center. Campbell again, not going to get it, but they give it to Payne, and Payne just runs in his own guy, but penetration by number 56, Max Gorham, which we've said his name a lot tonight, in the backfield, making that play go nowhere and losing about three yards on that. This is where, you know, if you're the Knights, you gotta find a way to throw the ball successfully. And I know it's late in the game now, six minutes left to go, but with just running the ball, it looks like the Wildcats will always have someone waiting somewhere. Yeah, they had a good play and then they have a bad play. It's almost feast or famine with the Knights tonight. Can't consistently take the ball down the field. So we have the wishbone again with Loveless under center. Pitches is Dantes Barnes, who's gonna get caught way far in the backfield. Great pursuit by the defense. We're gonna give credit to get further backfield. Max Shercliffe 
And nobody said the edge on him. You know, they had two guys that neither one of them blocked number 80. Yeah, and it just was drawn out way too far. When you pitch it like that, you got to make a decision either to go outside or in. And he went outside, and that wasn't the right decision, <laughs> unfortunately. But these kids are in eighth grade. This is a learning opportunity for them. You know these coaches on the sideline are going to be, if they have the opportunity, well, we have the film for them. They could, they could purchase this film from Waycross and give them some ideas. So we're going to have to pitch to Payne, the sweep on the right side, still in the wishbone, and Payne gets back that yard as they lost, plus some, past the original line of scrimmage about a yard or so. Well, this is just not going to work. I mean, Mr. Payne evidently has tools and muscles, but uh, not going to be enough unless they can come up with some kind of like right there. They could have did a hook and ladder or something, <laughs> you know. Well, it's going to bring it fourth down, and I can give you some analysis on that play if uh, we get the chance to here in a minute, but it looks like they're going to punt. But they're not. They're faking, faking it. But there's it's, not going to be much yeah, there. That's not going to work, unfortunately. Deion Campbell is going to be the rusher on that play. Number 80 for the uh, Wildcats. Simon, Simon Shirley, our big tight end, making that stop. Coming up field, making a good open field tackle. That's very nicely done. Yeah, because uh, would-be blockers are just running up there and throwing a block down. Yeah, yeah. So a turnover on downs here, about the 41-yard line of the Wildcats. To go back to that play, uh, we're there in the wishbone. The wishbone's effective, but it's only effective if you have the two, we'll call them fullback blockers in front of you, getting further upfield and hitting somebody. The, in, in that case, when Pleasant Run did that, their blockers weren't far enough upfield to make a block. Oh, okay, because Patrick, knowing you, I was <laughs> figuring out a way where you could spin that where it's only effective if you have an ND on your uh, ND. Well, we're going to get a right off tackle. It looks like Hunter is going to get it, and he's going to make a good gain, about five yards or so, which we've been seeing all night from both Hunter and Brandon. Nice blocking. Barely gets touched until he gets past the 45. Finally down at the 47-yard line. We'll throw half second and about five. Come on, Patrick. Tell me more about Notre Dame. What happened? <laughs> Oh, man, I don't want to get into it. Oh, with four minutes and 15 seconds left, if we have a stoppage of time, I'll get into it. But um, as people might not know, I'm a big Notre Dame fan, and the, this previous game against Florida State University got me going, especially on that penalty. But nonetheless, they are in I formation here, Harrison is. You're trying like, to run this clock. Yeah, Brandon is going to get it this time, making good moves, making people miss. Past the first down marker and further to close to the 40-yard line. He finally gets brought down by the night defense. You know, Harrison, uh, Wildcat fans traveling and giving a lot of encouragement to their boys. And, and rightly so. These guys are really showing a good account of themselves. And now they got the chains moving once again. Yeah, Cesar Neri was the tackler on that, saving the touchdown potentially. We're going to be coming on close to now three minutes and 30 seconds left to go in this game. And Harrison is in complete control. High formation. Under center. Gonna pass it. Oh, that's dangerous. Locked down over the middle. Wow. Interesting play call there on a first down, trying to catch the defense off guard. Dantes Bernard, Barnes, Dantes Barnes, not fooled on that play, kept his head up, knocking down that ball, possibly could have intercepted it. He was covered. He was uh, covered in the interior like, from about five yards in, but if he lofted that over the defense, it was potentially a large gain. It could have been a good call if the quarterback, I believe it's Spencer Kinnett, just got some air under it. He, he fired it as a missile, though. Now, here we go on second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. We're going to have Brandon Beavis now upfield getting a first down. No one touched him until about 10 yards downfield, making nice a good game. Goes through there about four yards and makes that cut, and I'm gone. And they were lucky to get him down. 
Yes, yeah, number three, Keyshawn Fry, it's making that stop. After picking up about 12 yards, the ball will be spotted on the 30-yard line of the Knights for Harrison, and that will be a flag, flag. for something. It was the back judge. Well, it's going to be on Harry. No. It's going to be on yeah. a pleasant wow. run. It's going to be on a pleasant run. But Harrison went back. <laughs> they started going back like it was on them. I wonder what that could be. Oh, it's going to be. They never said. <laughs> we, we, we got a personal foul, it looks like, because it was of a 15 yard variety. We're on the 15 yard line from the 30. We, we don't get explanation from the referee on that. Maybe it was an unsportsmanlike conduct on the sideline, possibly. Not quite sure. We didn't see any players on the field looking like they should have got penalized. That's Everyone right. was standing around, especially of the 15-yard-wise. So anyway, we have Hunter off the right side getting close to the first down marker, gained about seven or eight yards. What did we come to expect from the running offense of Harrison tonight. Yeah, the Knights need to figure out a way to pull these guys out of their end zone here with 2.05 left to go in the affair. I hate to tell you, if they haven't figured it out with two, two minutes left, they're not going to figure it out. Well, I mean, you know, anybody could rise up and make a play. Somebody could make a strip or, you know, keep this guy from turning their end zone once more into malfunction junction here. Oh. Yeah, let's give credit to Hunter Barge and Brandon Beavis. The tailbacks for Harrison tonight have done a good job carrying the load for this offense. Even though they're only up 12, two scores, they've done a good job moving the ball. And there's Brandon there Beavis again, and he might get in. It is going to be a fumble. fumble. The Knights have that fumble. Wow. We're too far away from we can see it, but this replay will give us an insight of where it was. There the ball's out. It's hard and to tell, the but there's the recovery right it. there on your screen, on your right side of the screen. Looks like it could have been 22, possibly. That's Elijah Housley. Not quite sure of the recovery, but we saw the ball getting recovered. But it was good for the Knights uh, to, you know, put the kibosh to that touchdown. Now <laughs> they have the ball with 123 left to go in the game. Yeah, spotted on about the three yard line. They have 123 left to do something with it. There's gonna be a timeout, I believe. So Pleasant Run takes a timeout with 123 left. That'll leave them with one timeout left to go. As we mentioned, right before the end of the first half, it just takes one play to get back in it. And Harrison had an opportunity to score and put this game away with a three-score deficit, but they didn't. They get a turnover. At the end of the first half, they had a Hail Mary that was unsuccessful. If Dantes Barnes would have caught that Hail Mary, I'm sorry, Dantes, to keep bringing it up, but it was uh, a gift waiting for you. If you caught that, went down the sideline, this would have been a, a different game, especially right now when Harrison hasn't pulled away when they should have and taken advantage of it. They fumbled here on the three-yard line. They do an all-go again, Hail Mary. He catches it this time, redeems himself, gets within one score. They could do an onside kick. or I don't know if they do onside kicks. In, in, no, they probably don't do onside kicks in eighth grade. But they could get a, a stop. But... Uh, Oh, you never know what can happen. You never know what can happen. I'm so, just proud of the uh, Knights on defense to shut that down. You know, you're not going to score. You can't have these guys running wild either. Yeah, well, we're going to be in the shotgun here with Chris Payne is going to get the football, and he's just going to run it on the right, right side, and he's going to be met by the defense of Harrison, and he's not going to go anywhere. Do you agree with that play call, Jacob? I do, because at this point, all they're going to make sure of doing is getting out of the way from that goal line, see? And okay. Because even though they recover that fumble, you don't want malfunction happen to you when they get it back and score. So do I anticipate a pass here? As Jay Svett made a really nice lowering of the boom to stop Chris Payne on that. We we're inside a minute. Inside a minute, but at this point, you might as well just run this clock just out. Just run it out. 
I don't know. This is why we, we broadcast some of these games. You got two on two set here. I think we could get a Hail Mary. We, they, they don't get, these guys don't give up. Is, is the underlying theme. And yeah. look, it is. It's an all go. Sure it is. Sure is. He catches it. Well, it's caught. Nice job. And he's still on still his not feet. down. That's Dantes Barnes, I believe. Finally, a whistle, and he's going to be down at the night 36 yard line. So they listen to you, Patrick, and they have 26.6 to go. Yeah, well, this is the play they did at the end of the first half. They had safety help this time which just only slowed him down. He breaks that tackle, but a slew of them, including 27, Andrew Helton, finally brought him down. Number 44 was in on that tackle, Barry Rutherford as well. Clock running. Yeah, clock running, now we're at 20 seconds. Fakes that handoff, and he's Chris is gonna run himself on the right side. He's getting close to, the, he's gonna come back upfield, and he's gonna, he could be going, he's gone! He finally makes a move, a twist and a twist, and he's gone! Touchdown, pleasant run. Number four for the Knights, making that touchdown. Chris Payne, 4.3 seconds left on the clock here, allowing the Knights to dent their home scoreboard here. Yeah, this is an incredible play. I thought this was just, honestly, like you said, just run the ball, get off the field, call it a day. But Chris Payne, we haven't seen this all game. He does a spin moves, does a little jukes, gets back in upfield, goes back towards the sideline, and he's out of breath but well-deserved. This is where, as a team, you need someone to come up with something to give you, uh, you mm -hmm. know, something to go home with. Yeah, it makes it more rewarding for sure. Well, they're going to go for two here. They got a wishbone set up. So Isaiah Bumble under center. The snap. Bumble the snap. Picks it and up he's and scores. Be down. I think they blew the whistle. And that okay. is the end of the play because his knee touched the ground and will leave us with the score with 4.3 seconds left to go in this game. Harrison Wildcats 12, Pleasant Run Knights 6. And you see on the replay here, it's just the fumble to snap, but his knee is down right okay. there. Nice job by our crew catching that action. It's certainly better late than never for yep. the uh, Pleasant Run Middle School Knights to dent this scoreboard here. Yep, some to hang their hats on for sure to come. I mean, they're not gonna get this win because they're just gonna do victory formation. But a great effort on this last play by Chris Payne and his affiliates making blocks for him, this never giving up. Twisted out of that tackle. That was the key. And then he yeah. still had a block or two after that. Yeah. Dante's getting in front of him. Jay Svet was that person that he spun away from. Showing that speed. And <laughs> you can see he's exhausted after that. It's like, give me some, give me some oxygen, guys. So here come the Wildcats to... Uh, yeah, to just end this game, basically. They're going to be in an eye formation and just kneel it down. And that will end the game here at Northwest Stadium. The eighth grade football, Harrison Wildcats prevailing over the visiting Pleasant Run Knights, 12 to 6. Again, for Waycross Community Media, please volunteer. If you decide to, go online, give us a call. My name is Patrick Lewis alongside Jacob Williams. Thank you for tuning in and requesting that always move in a forward motion and keeping a positive emotion. Thanks for tuning in. Copies of this program are available for $20 each. Send program title along with your address and check or money order to Waycross Community Media. Attention Dub Coordinator, 2086 Waycross Road, Forest Park, Ohio 45240. Or buy securely on the web at www.waycross.tv.